Hi everyone, my name is Chrissy and I'm a Life Skills and Deployment Educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to bring you a condensed portion of one of our Return and Reunion courses called Return to Children. So this would be a good course to rec recommend to sailors who one have children, whether biological children, adopted children, or stepchildren. And then anyone else who just has a strong bond with a child. So think too about grandchildren, siblings, um, nieces or nephews, or maybe even neighbors or just acquaintances that you know of, um, of children who have been affected by your deployment. I like to start this course by just reminding sailors that everyone on the ship chose to be a active duty service member. And likewise, me, I'm a spouse, I'm married to an active duty service member, I'm also a mother of three. I also chose to be um, affiliated with this lifestyle. The people that are dependents and who are beneficiaries that did not choose would be our children of active duty service members. And I'm not here to say that that's a bad thing, but they don't necessarily choose to have separation from their parents. They don't choose to go through frequent PCS moves. Um, and that's not a bad thing. I chose this lifestyle for my three children, but I want to make sure that they have additional programs, resources, and a, a strong safety net for them to go through all of these changes. I will say too that it's been my experience, and this was my experience when I was a public school teacher. I taught children near um, Tinker Air Force Base, and my students actually had better coping mechanisms than some of my non-military students. So think too that they're just learning some coping mechanisms earlier in their life, and this can actually um, maybe be beneficial for them later, okay? So we're gonna talk about our return to reunion and returning to children course. Um, this is the general flow of how we're gonna go about the course today. We're gonna identify some concerns that most people have when returning to children, um, find a way to celebrate growth and change, and then some general reintegration tips. Now, I remind people in this course, please, look at these courses through several different lenses. One of them being, I'm new, I'm a new parent, I'm not used to this, I haven't done this before, or I'm new to the military with my children, um, so I want to know all of the tips and tools. Two, I've done this before, but my children were infants or younger, or I just now acquired a child through a marriage and I'm a step parent now, and so this is new to me. And third could be, I've done this several times, I've done this when my children were infants, when they were school-aged, and later when they were in high school. Um, I know this backwards and forwards, and you might know more than me, but think about how you can help those around you who are experiencing this. Another way for you to bond as a unit and open up and talk about um, the situation. Now, since these courses are being developed in response to um, the COVID-19 global pandemic, realize that children's lives have additionally been turned upside down. I think as a parent to all of the resources that I used to rely on, um, the schools, the tutoring, the babysitters, the support groups, um, maybe parents or grandparents that would come in and help out, that might not be an option for your family unit back at home. And that will be an additional stressor to them. So consider how this reunion might be different with the global pandemic. And I'll have a few more tips along the brief to just kind of bring that about um, so you're aware as well. So the first thing we wanna talk about is, I usually ask during class, you know, what, what's the age of your child? And realize that, that reintegration will be different for each age group of the child. Now, these are some of the general common concerns that pe parents have when they leave. Um, I had a very um, kind of uh, impressionable conversation once with a service member that said, I left when my infant was young, he's doing more now, he's walking and he's saying words, and I just feel like he's not gonna know who I am at all. I always wanna reassure parents that even though a period of time might have passed when you have not been able to communicate or be with your child, that they still have a process and they still have opportunities and they still want to be a part of your life. I, I have found that even with children who have been separated from their parents for other situations that don't have to do with deployment, they still yearn and they still want to be with their child. 
So checking in also with that child's caregiver to make sure that they're showing pictures and videos and speaking about you frequently. And if your child hasn't seen you in a long time, maybe see if you can get someone to take a picture and send that along as well, because you might have changed over the course of deployment. And so we wanna make sure that they get familiar with your face and how that might have changed um, since your separation, okay? How will the children react when I come home? Will I be able to be integrated into part of my family again? Um, will my child be hurt? Will they have any um, residual or long-term effects from my absence? These are common concerns. How can I make up for lost time? And will my children and I actually get along? Will I, will I be a part of this family unit? Those are some common concerns. And we're gonna cover those in the next section. So check back for part two.